There are many attractions to being a billionaire. You could open a private zoo, commission statues depicting yourself as various historical figures striking heroic poses, or, if you want to go full Blofeld, hollow out your private island to hide a moon-melting death ray. Alternatively, you could forget such fripperies and just buy a Rolls Royce Phantom. You don't need to be an actual billionaire to afford one, but you do need to be somewhere toward the top of the 1%. Rolls-Royce CEO Torsten muller says that owners will almost exclusively be ultra-high net worth individuals, those with more than $30 million in cash and liquid assets. While the standard Phantom won't be priced significantly above the outgoing version, figure around $450,000, it will be possible to more than double that through the sort of personalization that Rolls encourages its buyers to indulge in such as installing commissioned art in the dashboard or color matching the exterior to the exact shade of the sunset behind your beach house in the Maldives. This is a car for people who don't care what it costs. You don't need to be an actual billionaire to afford one, but you do need to be somewhere toward the top of the 1%. Rolls-Royce CEO Torsten muller says that owners will almost exclusively be ultra-high net worth. The first Rolls-Royce Phantom was produced as long ago as 1925, and the company claims that the nameplate is the longest serving in the automotive industry. While that's true, there have been long gaps between some of the earlier generations. Regardless, this all-new 8th generation model, we're asked to refer to it as Phantom made in the style of a Monarch or a Star Wars sequel, directly replaces the 2003-era Phantom 7, which was the first Rolls-Royce developed under BMW ownership. The Phantom 8 is the first car to sit on Rolls-Royce's new aluminum space frame platform, officially known as the Architecture of Luxury which will underpin all future modules including the upcoming Project Cullinan SUV. The exterior design has undergone a less revolutionary transformation when compared with the outgoing model, gaining more curves and a radiator grille that integrates into the front of the car better than the last Phantom's freestanding chrome Parthenon. But despite some modest reduction in exterior dimensions, the Phantom 8 has lost none of the 7th's ability to shock and awe especially in some of the snazzy two-tone paint finishes that Rolls-Royce chose for the cars used for the media launch in Switzerland. As you'd expect, our Phantom experience began in the back seat of an extended wheelbase model. While muller says that 8 out of 10 Phantom owners will drive themselves at least occasionally, and that US buyers are the most likely to take the wheel, the extended wheelbase, EWB, model, 8.6 inches longer than the regular car, probably will be piloted by a chauffeur. And not a robotic one, either. Ingress is still made through a rear-hinged coach door in rolled speak, the unpleasant connotations of the more usual suicide reference thus being deftly avoided, and the rear cabin is every bit as special as you'd expect. The carpet pile is ankle-deep, the adjustable seats offer a variety of massages, and there's a refrigerator mounted in the center console complete with a clip-in decanter. Sadly, the last item proved empty during our ride. The interior feels very traditional, with a predictable abundance of wood and leather and old-fashioned rotary heating controls rather than digital displays, red for hotter, blue for colder. But there's plenty of well-disguised 21st-century tech, too, apparently one of the key demands from buyers of the old car. Display screens motor down from the backs of the front seats to sit above the traditional wooden picnic tables, while USB and HDMI ports hide beneath a slide-down cover. The infotainment system is a thinly disguised version of BMW's iDrive system that is operated by a similar turn-and-click controller, touch-sensitive screens would have been a little too vulgar, and they get so smeary. The rear seat also provides a good view of the dashboard, which incorporates the gallery, a glass panel spanning the dashboard, behind which owners can have their own personally commissioned artworks placed when the car is built. 
The instrument cluster and the infotainment screen are also placed behind the glass. Rolls-Royce is happy to connect buyers with artists working in everything from traditional oil paints to avant-garde ceramics, and Mularadvos says it's entirely possible that a well-chosen piece by an up-and-coming talent might ultimately be worth more than the car surrounding it. Damn phones, Babylon's can't